FPS is a genre that has been consolidated for a long time. We have big names like Battlefield, Call of Duty, Doom, among many others. But how do developers translate this to virtual reality? Today I want to talk about Pavlov and why it is so different from a traditional FPS. Pavlov has several game modes, many of which were created by the community itself. One of them which I played live is Pavlov Zombies, which is nothing more than a translation of the Zombies mode from Call of Duty to Virtual Reality. There's a crucial point that we need to see when we are going to compare a Virtual Reality game with a normal game, which is the interaction factor. Interaction in VR is much more important than interaction in a traditional game. After all, the most used word to describe VR is immersion. So let's do some comparisons so I can explain how everything works in Pavlov. In a Call of Duty, you choose your class, you enter a match, and you're playing. Your job is to aim and shoot your opponents. How do you aim? You press a button for that. How do you shoot? You press another button. For the reload, you press another button. Every interaction in traditional games boils down to pressing a button for such thing to happen. In VR, this changes a lot. To aim, you have to move. You need to turn the camera as if you were the soldier. When I say turn the camera, it's not really turning the camera because you are the camera. So you need to turn your head. There's even a way to turn by analog. I need to do that, especially when I'm doing live, because I don't want to have my back to the chat. So the camera movement problem has been solved. You will use the headset sensors to move your head, which makes you turn in the game. But how to shoot? Simple. Most VR headsets have controls that are shaped like a gun. It's no coincidence that has more first-person games in VR. So the control is made in an ergonomic way, which will fit your hand to the point that you can hold it, as if you were holding a gun. And you have to pull the trigger to shoot. So here we have already solved two problems that we have when passing a normal FPS to virtual reality. But there's a very big difference in the VR game. You don't have to look at your target. I know, this is confusing, but let me explain. Imagine you dropped something under your bed. Do you need to look at that thing to get it? No, you can just put your hand down there and take it. In the game, you can point your gun to the side while looking straight ahead. You can stay covered in one place while you simply put the gun out of the cover for you to shoot. I know there are games that have this mechanic. Gears of War is an example of a game that utilizes this. But normally this happens in third-person games, and here we are talking about first-person. If I'm not mistaken, in Call of Duty Vanguard, a way was added for you to shoot cover without necessarily aiming. But you still need to have your vision focused on what you want to shoot. So we already solved the problem of camera movement and how to shoot the gun. Okay, and how do you reload? In a normal game, just press a button and it reloads. Not that it doesn't exist in VR, it exists. There are games like Larsenault, which have a mode where you press a button and the character reloads, but that breaks the immersion. In Pavlov, it works like this. You will pick up your weapon, you will take the cartridge out of the weapon, you will take the other magazine, you will put the magazine inside the weapon, and you have to pull. This creates certain problems, which are not problems, because weapons are different. Different weapons reloads in different ways. So when you pick it up a weapon in the middle of the game that you don't know how to use, you might get confused when reloading. This happens a lot, because a sniper is different from an SMG, which is different from a machine gun, which is different from a shotgun. It complicates a lot for developers when they have to bring a game into VR, because you have to come up with all these reload mechanics, which I think must be a very difficult mechanic to do. Especially in the bigger games, developers tend to come up with ways for you to recharge in many different ways. I think that's what changes the most from a traditional game to a virtual reality game, the reload. Because reloading the weapon is so simple, it's just such a common thing in a normal game, you just have to press a button, and then the character does the animation. Sometimes you get an upgrade and you'll be able to recharge faster, but in VR, if you want to reload faster, you need to reload faster, you need to be faster. However, there are two problems that remain in virtual reality. One of them was brought from traditional games, which is analog. Analog is still the main way you move around in virtual reality. So you need to have enough hand coordination 
to move around the analog stick while aiming and shooting. I'm sure you have seen videos of people walking on treadmills in virtual reality, but the biggest problems with these treadmills, and besides that it's a giant mess, they are very expensive and require you to put in a lot of physical effort to play a certain type of game. And I'm not an example of fitness. The thrill seeker, he took one of these treadmills and traversed the map of Skyrim. He was almost dying by the end of the challenge. Another problem is weight. There's no weapon to have weight. But when I'm in there, it's something I don't even realize in my head. I'm really holding that gun. There's not necessarily a necessary for you to put weight on a weapon, but there are things that help you to use two-handed guns, which even adds a type of recoil. But I think that's what I had to talk about in this video. This is how an FPS works in virtual reality. This is how developers translate the main problems of the games to VR. It's just that we focus more on Pavlov, but there are other games that do interesting things, like Boneworks which has a mechanic in which if you pick the magazine, touch the weapon, the magazine inside the weapon leaves, what allows you to do some very interesting reloads. So that's it. If you like this video, leave your like and subscribe to the channel for new videos. I'm Skyper and I will see you in the next video.